Hello, 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 people. Welcome to another installment. <laughs> the installment of the saga that is my life. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. If you have not already, please do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button. Um, also hit the bell. You'll always know when I post a video. So today I want to talk about Miley Cyrus and how I think she just has not found the right person. Um, I am a huge proponent of love. I think that love will save us all. Um, what was that song by the Beatles? All you need is love. All you need is love. Guys, um, we live in such a independent world today. We are so independent, and I love that. I do. But at the same time, we cannot forget about love. Love is what defines us as human beings, you know? It is the single most powerful motivator in our lives, you know? It, it can motivate a woman to p lift a car up with her bare hands uh, if, her, her, if her child is under it. Um, it can encourage lovers to travel across the seas to fight for someone. It can be what a, a big brother defends his little brother on a playground who's getting um, um, beat up or, or bullied on. Love is one of the most powerful things. And um, I don't know if I told you guys, but I'm actually writing a book. I'm writing a book about myself as a millennial and finding love and um, my husband and I, our unique story, because I really think that millennials have a problem with love. I really do. I think that Gen Y had the same problem. Okay, let me break this down. Millennials, Gen Y, and Gen Z. So I feel like one of the biggest issues of why the world is so polarized right now is because of Gen Z, Millennials, Gen Y, and then weirdly baby boomers trickled in there. <laughs> Let me explain. Now, I feel like, and, and I'm going to relate this to Miley Cyrus. Don't worry. Get into Miley, Miley Cyrus. I feel like for all of those different generations, demographics, and I, I feel like I have a closer look at this since I am in digital marketing and high-level advertising, creative publicity, and stuff like that. Um, so I've done a lot of studying into demographics and things like that. Um, people are born into different sort of segments in the way that the grand scheme of things lay out. So when you hear the words millennials, Gen Y, Gen Z, that's associated with adults, people who are now adults or young adults or teenagers or whatever it might be, um, who were born in a certain segment of time, you know, so for us millennials, I think that was between uh, 88 and 94 or something like that. And don't quote me on those dates, but basically generally around like that time frame, like very late 80s and early 90s. I, I was born in 91, so I'm a millennial. Um, and then Gen Y, if you think back to those shows like Buffy the Bam Vampire Slayer, um, Charmed, uh, Angel, like all of those type shows, you know, um, and you think about the music like, uh, what is it called? Um, what was the band that made that, that song, Semi Charmed Life? Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. I'm getting like American Pie flashbacks. Anyway, those kids are like Gen Y, okay? And then Gen Z is like, uh, Gen Z are like the young kids. I, I don't, I don't know how to like describe it. They're like, uh, the kids who are on TikTok right now. They're like, um, they're the kids who are like in their early twenties right now. We'll just say that they're the kids who are in their early twenties right now. And I, I feel like basically what happened is all of those generations had technology in different waves, different phases, and technology like hit us different, you know? You know, when you say like, ooh, that hit different, you know? <laughs> technology hit all of these generations a little different. So me personally, um, you know, Miley Cyrus, is one year younger than me so when I was graduating high school she was like a 
a, a sophomore. Sophomore? A junior. Sophomore. Sophomore, senior, junior. Freshman, sophomore, or freshman, junior, sophomore, senior. I can't even remember how that goes, but she was one year behind me. <laughs> and um, I really love that song, Party in the USA. <laughs> I gotta admit, like, I, back in, like, 2014 or whatever, I knew all of the words to that song. And I watched a deep dive on Miley Cyrus. Basically, I feel like Miley Cyrus, she's a millennial like me, even though she's one year younger than me. I feel like millennials, we grew up where Facebook was the new thing on the block. Now TikTok is the new thing on the block. We grew up where social media was sort of just being born. And then Gen Y grew up where cell phones were just becoming more widely dispersed. Um, email was becoming more outdated and instant messaging was becoming the thing. So it's like we experience technology differently. And then, and then, don't forget about baby boomers. Don't forget about, at least for millennials, our parents. You know, our parents and some of us, some of us millennials who have young parents, maybe our grandparents, almost closer to that, um, and definitely Gen Z's grandparents, like our parents and our grandparents, our aunts or whatever, they also weigh into all of this because um, at least I know my mom, she is like an expert at technology now. I remember back in like 2012, I was like, oh my god, Ma, you need to get a Mac, you need to get uh, an iPhone, get rid of this Android stuff, like what are you doing? Get on your technology game. Honey, flash forward 10 years later, now my mom is 70 years old and she is bossing it, honey. Like she is up on stuff before I am. Literally, I told her about the show This Is Us which I really love that show and she really got into it too. And then I got busy with work and I basically couldn't binge watch it as much as I was. And she was like, I was like, Ma, I finally caught up on This Is Us. And she's like, oh, that? <laughs> she's like, you still on that? Oh, I've moved on, you know? Like, it's like, but, you know, also when I post stuff on Instagram or Facebook, you know, like, Sometimes my mom is like the first person to see that stuff. Like, like I feel like baby boomer, <clears throat> they, uh, I'm trying to like speak in French. I was about to say they grâce à, which means like thanks to, okay, there we go. Thanks to their kids, thanks to their grandkids. You know, baby boomers are very, very um, ambidextrous, you know, if we want to say or you know, well versed with social media and technology now and even pop culture and stuff like that. So they're in the know. And we're all mixed in this together. Now, parallel our inherent experiences as Gen Y, Gen Z, Millennials, etc, etc, um, with where you are in life. Now, me, I'm 31, I just recently got married, and 10 years ago, you know, I was around the age of when Molly, Miley Cyrus came out with the uh, We Can't Stop video. And uh, I think back on that time. You know, Miley Cyrus, I feel like basically um, she, she, she went through what she needed to go through. Uh, I remember when she came out with We Won't Stop, People and, and when she started working with Mike Wills, uh, Mike Wills Maine, I think that's how you say it. I think that's his name. Um, when she started segueing more into hip hop, she started twerking and stuff. Um, basically, you know, showing herself half naked on TV. They just were like, no, this is not right. I saw you grow up. I, I saw you as a child. Um, this is not what you should be doing. And hey, I get it, you know, as someone who grew out of a good girl image, you know, I was the youngest in my family and I was very smart as a kid. I was a bookworm, you know, when everybody was going outside, I was inside doing little plays with my dolls and like writing stuff and, 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 you know, reading stuff. I had lots of books. 
watching movies and things like that and I, I really sort of grew up on Disney Channel and um, I can understand it you know when I started you know partying in college and sneaking out of the house and all this stuff um, it was a little bit disconcerting but I really am thankful for my parents because it's almost like they let me go out and sort of find my way because they had trust in me. They they trusted me and they had faith in me because of the love that they had instilled in me, because of the um, honor and pride and hard work that they had instilled in me. And I think Miley Cyrus was in the same place with Billy Ray Cyrus. You know, like there is, we all know how I feel about Piers Morgan on this channel because he came after my girl Meghan Markle and so he is axed, axed, X, X, axed, whatever from this channel. Um, but there was actually an interview that he had done with Billy Ray Cyrus very shortly after Miley Cyrus did release the, um, We Can't Stop, We Won't Stop. Is it We Can't Stop or We Won't Stop? After she released that music video, and he was like, you know, how do you feel as a father? You know, you know, how this this video is making people feel. <laughs> that's my best Pierce Morgan, like, impression. That's not how he sounds, but I don't know. That's the way his, you know, persona feels in my head. How do you feel about uh, the way people feel? And, um, you know, your, your, who was once an innocent teenage daughter who was on Disney Channel, you know, making people feel this way, you know, feel blah, 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 blah. And Billy Ray Cyrus, I actually love his response because he goes, that's exactly what music does. I, I'm loosely quoting, but he goes, that's exactly what music does. Music makes people feel. Um, basically, I, I, I watched all this on a deep dive, by the way. If you want to go and look at the video, Deep Dive does amazing videos about, you know, about a bunch of celebrities and pop cultures they kind of go deep I mean that's it's essentially that they do a deep dive into their life into their history and stuff so if you want just go search you know deep dive Miley Cyrus but Billy Ray Cyrus's response you know that's what music is supposed to do it's supposed to make you feel and the same way that my parents sort of you know let me break my good girl's persona and figure out who I was you know, which now, I don't party nearly as much as I used to. I mean, we still get out and bust a move every now and then. Um, but I don't party nearly as much as I used to because I feel like I got it out of my system. And two years ago when I met my husband, I feel like I have really just grown as a person. And if you would have asked me five years before that, ten years before that, I would have thought that I was going to marry some American guy, some just like, you know, classic American guy, maybe a guy who wore a suit and tie to work every day, like, you know, like maybe like Liam Zansworth, you know, sort of like that. And then when I met my husband and he worked in construction and he was not American, he was Portuguese and he was not extroverted like me, he was introverted. Um, it really caught me off guard and it surprised me. But as I said in the um, Britney Spears video that I recently posted, um, opposites attract, guys. Opposites attract. And, and, and it's a thing. And, and, and it's, a, it's a thing for a reason. You know, we, we need to balance each other. And so um, when I just basically look back on the anthology of my life, you know, from my childhood, being this good little girl, to, you know, late high school, early university, um, breaking out of that image, breaking out of that mold, discovering who I was, rebelling a little bit, um, to my 20s, in which I would argue that my 20s was really meant for me establishing my career and finding what my passions really were. You know, finding what the the nuances and in intricacies of my, my personality really were. Um, really doing some self-discovery. And then right before I hit my 30s, you know, I met the love of my life and we decided to get married. I feel like that is where Miley Cyrus is. <clears throat> I think that very soon, if she allows herself. Now, she could also sort of turn out to be like, you know... Cameron Diaz type person who 
she doesn't really ever settle down or if she does settle down maybe it'll be very very late in life and I really hope that's not the case because even though Miley Cyrus has really tried her best to break this good girl mold and stuff I do think that you know at the end of the day those southern values get you honey <laughs> if you were raised in Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, South Carolina, you know exactly what I mean. Like eventually that crap that was just hammered into you from such a ripe age, it eventually gets you. But um, I think that beyond all of that, beyond all of that, because that's not what's really important. What I said at the beginning of this video, love is so transformative. And I think eventually she's gonna want to have that transformative love with a partner and she's gonna want to have children perhaps even if she doesn't want to have children i think that she's going to want to have this transformative love whether that manifests itself through a loving partner or a loving partner and children you know i i see that i see that for miley cyrus i just think that she hasn't found the right person you know and um I feel like there is a, a growing global adversity to marriage. There's this growing global sort of almost fear of love and marriage, um, especially between men and women. You know, like I feel like marriage is a sacred thing that should be shared between the two people who are in that for love. So if that's two women, great. If that's two men, great. You know, if that's a, a woman and a man cool <laughs> if it's like what's her name from parks and recreation you know like remember how um aubrey plaza's character had like a boyfriend and the boyfriend had a boyfriend you know if it's like that great whatever you know um but love can be very very transformative and i think what's happening as i've said you know i feel like gen z gen y and millennials <clears throat> and baby boomers we have the, if you think of two parallels over here you have love and over here you have technology and sort of society you know the current events over time that have happened that have shaped society you have society and you have love um when you look at millennials you look at gen y you look at gen z and you look at how these generations grow in parallel to society and in parallel to what phases they are in their life. Because going back to my phase, you know, for example, as a kid, good girl phase, you know, late teenage, early, early 20s, breaking out of that good girl phase, rebellious 20s, discovering who I really am, and then transformative love right at the crest of uh, you know, late 20s. And then you look at where technology and society was, you know, it sort of makes sense. The, the, the basic point is you kind of have to go on this journey. But um, in another video, I kind of have to talk about this because now that I've brought it up, it's a very curious and um, philosophical topic almost. But this interaction between these different generations, you know, when I really, really butt heads with some people on, uh, you know, social media, um, oftentimes it's with people who are from different generations, whether they're Gen Z, so they're younger, they're like, you know, much younger than me, and they were born with like three devices in their hands, or it's with people who are a bit older than me. So I think Gen X is the one that's there like in their 50s now. Uh, 50s or 60s so I think that's um, Gen X but don't quote me on that and baby boomers like that's where my mom's from so um, I feel like where we are in parallel with where society and technology has been you know if you think about baby boomers you know if you think about our parents and our grandparents they were born into a much more conservative society society was less integrated as far as culturalism um, depending on where you are, like I, I can't speak in blatant statements, but you know, for the most part, it was less inclusive, um, and they were much more traditional. So it makes sense when you get into these conversations and they feel like you're being too liberal or whatever it is. Um, 
it makes sense. And then also when you talk with um, people who are younger and who literally they were born with three devices in their hands, like Gen Z legitimately, they, you know, are so adept at living in a technological world because they've always basically known this. They were born when cell phones and, you know, the the internet was mastered, you know, it was it was more mastered than it had been in previous times. You can really get insight into it. But I feel like um transformative love is really what Miley Cyrus needs. I feel like she was born into a generation. Um I'm gonna do another video about this because really it's it's almost two videos. One of them is sort of Disney Channel how Disney Channel was different for the different generations, how Disney Channel was different for millennials versus Gen Z. And then another video is sort of like, um, um, comparing and analyzing the difference of experiences between Gen XYZ millennials, baby boomers. You know, it's almost that like philosophical question of, how are our generations different? But, um, yeah, I think that where Miley Cyrus is, is perfectly fine. I think that people are, tend to be so critical, you know, like we live in a world that is so critical, but really just what Billy Ray Cyrus said, you know, music is supposed to make people feel, um, I feel like that's it. You know, Miley Cyrus is exactly where she's supposed to be. She's probably not going to stay in this place. No, she, she will not stay in this place forever because that's just how life works. Um, but I think that we have to give people the leeway, the, 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 the open, um, sort of the, the, we have to give people the freedom to, just live their life and really go through all of the twists and turns of life to get to where you're going. And I'm, I'm always going to be an advocate of love. Always. You know, I talk about in the Britney Spears video that Sam Asghari and, and Britney Spears are opposites. And even though people give Sam Asghari a lot of flack, I think that there's true love there. And I think that he is doing what he knows how to do to protect her and to be there for her. Um, I think he's a good, I think he's a good pick. And, um, but that's what worked for Britney Spears and Sam Asghari. And you also have to think that Britney Spears is, um, from a different generation than Miley Cyrus. When you look at Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth, he was conservative and she was not. And maybe in the beginning, that was a source of love and, um, intrigue for them, you know, but perhaps she was not mature enough to see the 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 irony in that you know like perhaps she was not mature enough to see um that this person's not necessarily trying to tear you down and liam probably didn't wasn't mature enough to see that either he you know <clears throat> as someone married to like someone who's the opposite of me you basically have to be mature enough to understand that that person's different from you and they should be your partner, your loving partner, and, you know, balance you out, but you don't have to be the same person. You don't have to have the same interest. You don't have to have the same views on everything. And so I think that Miley will get to that place. I do. I don't know that it'll be anytime soon, um, but I really hope it is. I think that, she, I hope that she finds someone who loves her in the way that she deserves to be loved but I also hope that she discovers a certain amount of independence, of peace. That's like, I feel like the key word is of peace within herself. So that when real love does walk into her life, you know, and I'm not saying that Liam Hemsworth wasn't real love. Let's, gonna, let's say transformative love. So that when transformative love walks into Miley Cyrus's life, she's going to recognize it immediately, okay? And um, other than that, I think that she's on the right track, you know? She's, she's going through these phases to sort of get to her self-actualization. And guys, 30 is still fairly 
quite, quite young, you know. She's not, <clears throat> you know, she's young and she's making mistakes. Even in your 30s, you can say that. Even in your 30s, you can say they're young and they're making mistakes. Like, that's, that's what life is about. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And um, if you have not already, please go ahead and take your little finger and click that like and subscribe button. And if you click the bell, you will always know when I'm posting videos. So, I will see you guys in the next one. Bisous. Thank you so much for being here. And... Stay safe out there.